thousands of Californians involved to participate in this process and to make um, human trafficking, the selling of a minor child in the state of California, a serious felony. And that was just extraordinary. And I want you to know we couldn't have done it without all of you standing in front of me. Um, now, thanks to SB 14, anyone who traffics a minor child for sex is considered a serious felony. It's a strikeable offense, and we're excited that we were able to elevate that to, the, to that level in the state of California. The good news is that we've received um, notices from district attorneys across the state where individuals are being busted for human trafficking, and we gave them a tool in their toolbox so that they could put these individuals in prison, specifically if, uh, for a longer period of time if they were a repeat offen offender. The passage of SB 14 was a historic step in the right direction. But after meeting with our survivors and our lived experienced experts, we realized that there are two people that it takes to perpetrate this crime. The buyer, which we address, or excuse me, the seller, which we addressed last year, and the buyer, which we are addressing today in public safety with SB 1414. Children as young as 14 years old are being exploited and victimized in this industry, and they're forced to unimaginable horrors. And let's be clear, there is no such thing as child prostitution. It doesn't exist in the state of California, kids. It's illegal to be a child prostitute. A child cannot consent to selling her body and make it legal. You have to be 18 to buy a lottery ticket, and this bill is going to protect children who are exploited in this arena um, under 18 years old. This particular bill that we have today is making sure that SB 1414 that states that anyone legally, and Tyson will come up here and explain it more in detail, anyone who solicits or engages in solicitation of a minor child for commercial sex will face a felony today. That's a misdemeanor. Don't be shocked. I was shocked, but it is a misdemeanor to engage in solicitation or solicit a minor for, for sex. We want them to be felony charges. We want them to be registered as a sex offender. And I'm telling you that I'm just not talking about just that piece. I want them to pay a $25,000 fine so that those resources can go to the individuals and the organizations behind me and others like them around the state to help rescue and deal with the trauma that these individuals suffered at the hands of these perpetrators. We all have to shed a light on the darkness of human trafficking and we have to bring justice and protection to those that are affected. California is a hotbed for human trafficking, and with the passage of SB 1414, we want to sell, send a very clear message that not one more child, not one more child will be sold or suffer at the hands of those that ex seek to exploit our children. Together, we can stand up and make sure that these children in California are protected. As was mentioned, my name is Vanessa Russell. I am the founding executive director of Love Never Fails. We are a national anti-trafficking organization that has been in place for the last 13 years. And we started when one of my 15-year-old dance students was raped in the city of Hayward and sold throughout California for a year. Um, I'm also, I should mention, I'm also the cybersecurity professor for Merritt College in the heart of Oakland, where we specialize in providing economic sustainable skills for survivors of human trafficking and other underserved community members. Human trafficking is rooted in slavery. It's targeting the most vulnerable people in our society for the sexual gratification of the most powerful. These vulnerable members of our society are children, often children that are in foster care, living in poverty, Children like 15-year-old Elena, whose mother was murdered in the life and was coerced to believe that she was continuing her legacy by continuing to be trafficked in her mother's footsteps. Children like 16-year-old Tanisha, who thought her exploiter loved her until she said she didn't want to do it anymore, and she was pistol-whipped and put out on East 15th anyway, and even though she had a closed eye and bruised arms, was still forced by buyers to have sex one after one after one. Did you know that buying these children is just a misdemeanor today? punishable by two days in prison and oftentimes those are not even being served. I was so grateful when I heard that Senator Grove and Rubio were standing up with SB 1414 to address this injustice, making this crime a felony and shocked to hear that there was pushback. 
The reason given by those that are pushing back is that a belief that 16 and 17 year olds should be excluded from protections because they are voluntarily entering into the sex industry and need a means to provide for themselves. If 16 and 17 year olds need financial means to survive, why are we relinquishing them to having sex with strangers in the dark in back alleys instead of training them for economically sustainable careers and safe jobs? Being raped by 16 at 16 by nine to 21 people a day is not a summer internship. It is not an empowering work experience and certainly isn't a way to provide for oneself since the money earned for their rape is being kept by their exploiter. In California, it is a felony to rape a child. Penal Code 261 states that raping a child under 14 is punishable by 9 to 14 years and raping a child 14 to 18 is punishable by, nine, by 7 to 11 years in prison. Why are children who are being sold multiple times a day not worth the same convictions and protections. A 2006 research project revealed that 99% of buyers are men, 86% are 26 and older, 42% earn more than $50,000 a year, 29% graduated from college, 69% are employed, and 49% are married. Explain to me why we are working so hard to protect educated, affluent, and people who know better, who know this is wrong, and not working hard enough to protect innocent children. Thank you for supporting SB 1414. Yes, sir. It's tell me when they meet with me. They tell me, Tyson, every time I'm in that hotel room, and the trafficker sends a buyer to my hotel room. It's life or death for me. When that door opens, Tyson, I have to read that buyer within a few seconds because it may be my life. I have worked directly with child victims of sex trafficking in California. I see and hear their stories of abuse and rape day to day. And I also know firsthand the damage that buyers cause. I was first sold to men and purchased for sex at the age of 14 in my own backyard and community of South Central Los Angeles. That continued through my teen years and at no point did I choose it. At no point did I want to be there. And at no point was any sex buyer held accountable for the crimes committed against me. Today, the teen victims ages 14 to 17 that I work with are purchased for sex in the same city and surrounding communities, often on the same streets and same motels that I was abused in so many years ago. But the child, the victim, the hundreds of children being bought and sold throughout the state, they walk away with physical and emotional trauma that they live with for the rest of their lives. For me, that meant depression, complex PTSD, multiple suicide attempts, a cervical cancer diagnosis, and a number of other challenges I face as a survivor. What is the message that we are sending our children about their worth and value? When does it end? Sex buyers don't just rape children, they rob them of their childhood, their dreams, their dignity, their worth, and their value. Today, I work with child victims who struggle to just live another day. They're afraid of going to bed at night to face the torment of night terrors that await them as their bodies and minds keep score of the crimes committed against them. Are our children not worth protecting and fighting for? Of course they are. So I ask you, I plead with you today, would you consider the reality of a child that is bought for sex repeatedly? We need a punishment that fits the crime. And to be clear, this is a crime against a child. It breaks my heart as a survivor to hear that in 26 years since I was first purchased for sex as a teenager, buyers have successfully continued to abuse and rape children in California because no one is holding them accountable. 
nothing has changed, which tells us that something has to change. The laws didn't protect me then, and they aren't protecting children now. That's why, as a survivor and overcomer of child sex trafficking, who now works with hundreds of child and teen victims, I support SB 1414 and urge you to do the same and do your part in giving our children the justice and protection they deserve. Thank you. To this day, I'm still in therapy every week for my complex PTSD, and I need extensive health care to my back a result of the last time that I was sold, raped, and beat. I share that with you to share the long-term healing journey that a victim has to survive because of being bought. Responsibility to do right for the victims that it's happening to now. At no point ever is a trafficking victim choosing or has a choice. To all the survivors behind us, uh, I am a survivor of domestic violence, so I know how difficult it is to put your life out there. It is so difficult to acknowledge what you're feeling and put your feelings out there. So I know that it takes tremendous courage for the survivors to stand behind me and come and tell their stories. I know it takes a lot of courage to have to relive. Every time you tell a story, you're reliving the horrific circumstance that you were put in. We will fight for you and we will make sure that nobody harms our children. We need to stop the violence in our state, but in particular today we're here to tackle our children, our most vulnerable uh, residents of California. That is unacceptable. Our children are too young to consent and they're forced into horrific circumstances. California is leading the way in human trafficking. We wanna be leaders, but not on human trafficking. We need to stand firm. We need to send a loud message to everyone in the state that we will protect, protect children at all costs. A child cannot consent. And if we keep sending that message that a child could consent, then we are only encouraging our children to remain silent when things happen to them. They feel like they did something wrong. They feel like they're to blame. And we need to share with them that we're here to listen. We're here to protect them. And we will continue to fight alongside them. So they not only are they protected, but there's penalties for those that are harming our children. Good morning. My name is Dr. Stephanie Powell, and as you heard, I'm a retired police sergeant. I ran a vice unit in the Los Angeles Police Department. I am also a victim's advocate. I have witnessed the consequences of human trafficking. I have witnessed sex buyers solicit and agree to engage in commercial sex acts. Trafficking victims have said, as you have heard, the buyers knew how old they were and didn't care. A buyer sees the body of the exploited as a commodity. The idea that a 16 or 17 year old should be excluded from this bill is ludicrous. Those same minors can't legally buy alcohol, but yet they should be allowed to be sold and the consequences a misdemeanor? The mere thought of that goes against everything that I have personally fought for. My childhood and innocence was stolen because I was being sold time and time after, time and time again, day after day. And each day I woke up and it was like yesterday, pure misery. I didn't get to walk across the stage. I didn't get to go to prom or any dance for that matter, to go to the mall with my friends or skating or anything that a teenager should get to do. My mom, she searched for me tirelessly. I was featured on news stations all across America and uh, featured on missing and exploited children. At one point, there were flyers that were posted right down the street from where I was being sold. And on several occasions, I would have buyers come to me and say, hey, did you see your picture, your flyer down the street? And I would say, no, I didn't. And then they would proceed to purchasing. The thing is, the flyer says a few different things. It said my name. It said how old I was, and it also said that I was missing. It also said, if you see her, to call the police, and they did not. I think, well, what if they didn't know? What if they don't know how old they are? But think about this. Think about your 10-year-old, your 14-year-old, your 16-year-old. What if somebody raped them time and time again, and then when they were done, they said, oh, sorry, I didn't know. I didn't know they were a minor. But because they threw money at them, that made it all better? No, it doesn't. 
No child deserves to be sold. And in order to sell something, you have to have a buyer. I support SB 1414. Thank you. We commonly identify girls and women as victims of trafficking. However, boys are regularly targeted as well. And there's no secret that our children in particular are at the brunt and the most vulnerable to be targeted. The FBI has ranked San Diego as one of the 13 worst regions in the United States with up to 8,000 victims per year. 60% of trafficking victims are or have been in the foster care system. So how can it not be our state's responsibility, our state leader's responsibility? I was a ward of the state for 13 years. So what does that mean? A child of the state. Children in our state are being trafficked as we speak. It's time to hold the perpetrators who take advantage of our children accountable. Because it's time to send a thorough message that if you seek to buy a child for sex, that you will pay the highest criminal penalties in this state. Because it's time to send a thorough message that if you seek to take advantage of our most vulnerable, especially our foster children, you will pay the price. It's time to send SB 1414 to the governor's desk and send a thorough message that our most vulnerable children ought to be protected by the state of California. Thank you.